Constitutionalism as an instrument for transformation. That's the theme of this year's 17th Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture. It will be delivered at the University of Johannesburg this Saturday by Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng. The Nelson Mandela Foundation says it's mindful of the fact that constitutionalism can and has been utilized as a sophisticated instrument for protecting power, privilege and property. NMF CEO Silo Hatang joins us now for more. A very good evening to you, Mr. Hatang, and thank you so much for joining us. So perhaps let's start with some legal matters before the court's AFRI forum had taken legal action against you. You seem to have lost that court, but what is your response? Well, the, 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 there are two parts to the court case. As uh, you'll remember that uh, the, we took uh, a free forum to uh, the, the we, we took the matter to the constitutional court after um, Roots, the deputy CEO of a free forum, sent a tweet um, and that tweet uh, we, we said it was in contempt of court and we, we uh, the court today decided that um, they didn't want to hear that matter at the moment. Uh, we, we want to just express our gratitude to the court again um, that uh, this, uh, we, with this loss, uh, it, it means that we have to go back to the drawing board and decide with our legal team what, what steps so to So you're take saying next. it's more on, on the technicality and that is more on the issue of urgency as opposed to uh, the s substance of the matter? The we, we believe that's what uh, the court, uh, it, the, the court didn't put it like that. But that's we, your that's interpretation. How we read it. It's our interpretation. But the main uh, thrust of the case, which was ab about uh, the, 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 the flag constituting hate speech, mm -hmm. that matter is still... Uh, going to the Supreme Court of Appeals because the um, Afri Forum has decided to appeal the matter. Mm. So you'll remember that uh, Justice uh, uh, Mujabe had turned down the uh, 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 appeal and now they've gone to, to the, um, uh, the, the, the appeal court to say they would like it to be heard. So that part is still current. Okay. So, I mean, it, it actually is almost fortuitous, one would say, the fact that you would have the 17th annual lecture on this particular theme, especially given what you've expressed on it, constitutionalism as a tool to preserve, uphold power and privilege. Would you say these are some of the things that have made you think of such a theme, the importance thereof? Coincidentally, um, when the board decided on, on constitutionalism, it was uh, last year that uh, we need to be doing something around constitutionalism because those with power, those with privilege, th especially those with money, mm. can then run to the courts and always cry foul. Those without are always just left to the back burner and are forgotten. Which is and what I'm going is to say, the irony for sure. is that it's constitutionalism actually means the application of the constitution. So it's not necessarily veering away from, but making use of the law. But you are saying it's being used nefariously. In a way that uh, uh, privileges those who already have privilege. And we're saying, that even in the case of the flag, it's exactly mm. the same thing. We've argued that gratuitous display of the flag is only by those who actually have the power to do so. Um, if uh, you, you did it and you didn't have much power, you'd be dragged to the courts, as Afri Forum has done many times before. Mm. So you say that obviously this is a, a privilege limited to a few, those who are obviously at the higher echelons of, this, of society who have access to the financial means to almost obscure constitutionalism in their favor. Would you say the larger portion of South African majority, what is the state of their existence when it comes to social justice and equity in 2019 as a whole? We won't talk about other years. That's what we want to explore. Uh, we are hoping that the Chief Justice will go into those difficult areas and, uh, and ask, get, get us to ask difficult questions ourselves and begin to introspect. Mm. What is it that we're doing wrong? that many South Africans still feel discarded, forgotten, left out 25 years into democracy. How come that uh, uh, next year will be the 30th anniversary after Madiba's release, that there are many who are still left out, who feel that the constitution does not serve them well? And I think it's, uh, it's the power that lies in what our forebears decided to do when they wrote the constitution, that each one of us can play a part in ensuring that it serves the poorest mm. of the poor. Why the Chief Justice? Some would say it's a no-brainer. He is, of course, the Chief Justice. Um, 
but others would say he's somebody who, in fact, has been accused of overstepping. And he's obviously had his own responses of what he sees as overstepping, as in going into the arena of uh, uh, politics. We're not asking him to do that. We're asking him to play a role of uh, someone who is held highly in society, someone who has to uphold the constitution that Madiba helped draft, someone that uh, got, uh, got the opportunity to then say to South Africans, this is how a country of Madiba's dreams should look like. Mm -hmm. And this is how each one of us can play a role in terms of ensuring that those who, are, who, live, who feel left out always keep, keep feeling that this serves them too. And I think um, until such time that the constitution is not just a, a fantastic in paper, mm -hmm. but that it's a lived reality for many. We are lost. And there are critics of our constitution. I mean, it's been said many times over that we have one of the most liberal constitutions in the world. But uh, there are those who said it's actually the lack of constitutionalism that brings us to the point where we are. And if one looks at state capture, certainly one would say that that may be part of the problem. Some have even argued that if you look at uh, constitutionalism and uh, the levels of power that it infers on the executive and uh, members of the executive at high level, it actually puts them in a position where it denies the people of uh, South Africa lack of access to information. Well, I think uh, it, uh, that, that part is something that actually is protected by the very same constitution. That's why it's important that we explore what are the limitations and those limitations, what enables them. And certainly um, our legal framework is mainly uh, commodified in, in the sense that those who have access to resources can defend mm. their rights, and most of them know their rights. And if we take a good example of why we took uh, the tweet um, matter to court, it was mainly because we were arguing that the, if the rule of law has to have meaning, it has to apply to all of us. Mm. That uh, Aaron's roots should not be the exception to that rule that he can then break the law and he gets away with that. And that's the rule of law at the base of the constitution that says it should serve all of us. Um, that uh, at the point of us getting our democracy, attaining our democracy in 1994, we all signed a social compact that said each one of us will then be equal before the law. Mm. And but that's the law, what it but is. But the law in itself, uh, as a principle, allows for interpretation. And scholars would have said that, for instance, perhaps some of these executive powers are, are, are not especially at presidential level, are not absolute that Parliament has greater powers. And perhaps we should look at whether or not they're implied as opposed to whether or not they actually exist. Or that they are implemented well in terms of those who have to hold others accountable. For example, you used Parliament. Well, the, 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 the wide belief is that in the last, last nine years we've had a, a, a Parliament that was paralyzed that did not hold the executive to account at all. And it's that, those kind of areas that we need to be exploring. Where did we go wrong? Where did we falter? And did we stop short of, uh, of ensuring that we can then cross the line about uh, making sure that the constitution becomes a reality for many? And I think it's, uh, again, institutions of democracy, uh, such as parliament, such as chapter nine institutions, which are supposed to then, the public protector, which are supposed to mm. then be protecting those rights and we need and, to and then which be is what I'm wondering, that. because then uh, Parliament is de facto a representative of, of, the of the people. So if we talk about absolute power, it should lie with them as opposed to the executive and the executive branches of the executive. But that's the point, is that uh, if we are to talk about accountability, surely that then it means that uh, uh, Parliament needs to also, as a watchdog, be held to account. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that uh, the state capture process, for example, will help with uh, those kind of processes to then say, what was the role of Parliament? What was the role of the Speaker? What was mm -hmm. the role of the protection services even in Parliament to ensuring that uh, um, uh, Parliament served the very uh, fabric of the society that mm -hmm. you wanted to Okay, so just going back to that tweet of Ernst Roots, let's see if we can put it up there. For those of you who don't remember, it was about the old South African flag there. You see, he says, did I just commit hate speech? And I want to ask the question, so how can constitutionalism, as you said, uh, serve as an instrument for deep and sustainable change? Now, if we are to achieve that, we need to begin to ask ourselves about tweets like these. 
How are they helping with our tr transformation agenda? Are they helpful in terms of ensuring that we have a united South Africa? Um, do we still need people who still believe that the flag has currency in the current, uh, this flag has currency in the, in the current South Africa that we're trying to build? Those are questions that constitutionalism can then uh, transformation uh, at the center, putting transformation at the center of constitutionalism can help us get to. But those who live in those white enclaves such as uh, Oranya say they practice their own, uh, they're practicing constitutionalism. It is a constitution that enables them uh, to live apart from uh, the rest of society because they have a right to self-express, self-determine. You'll remember that all those rights have limitations. The only one that has no limitation is dignity. And that dignity is the one that we, we then say it, it's impugned upon by these kind mm. of tweets. And it's that uh, argument that we want to put forward to say, if we are to transform our society, we must go back to the nub of why we had to get the kind of flag that we had. Would that you was then it, agree to unite with South those? Africa instead of the one that was about celebrating whiteness, white supremacy. Would you then agree with those who, by the way, and as you know, um, former President Nelson Mandela, you know as a foundation, would have received some of this criticism of so-called selling South Africa out, that it's time to perhaps rewrite the Constitution have it more inclusive for those who believe that it's not inclusive. And that is a very uh, a tricky um, path to go down because then you start weighing up against the rights of the majority versus the minority, which supersedes the other. Truth is, our constitution is one of the best in the world. It's in the practice uh, that we then see it not being practiced well. I think it's, it's important that we then ensure that it becomes a reality. Um, through processes that we've put uh, in place. Um, and I don't think it's, uh, it, it's something worth not imagining, that uh, the Constitution can be, uh, it's always revised. Mm. You, d you have uh, amendments to the Constitution, which are to do exactly what you've asked, uh, that, that what you're asking for, uh, where people can always ask for amendments if they feel that the Constitution And that does includes not the issue of land, which has been a very incendiary uh, discussion. And some have even suggested that it may tear South Africa apart. Where, where does an enemy, for instance, stand where you're supposed to be seen as, um, uh, um, uh, uh, should I say, taking up the steam of the heat of such situations, being more diplomatic in such discussions like that, not having the bold leadership to stand firm and say it is time for redress? On the question of land, we have been saying it since 2007, at least, that um, land is one of those issues that's going to divide South Africa. And it's, it's sad that it took us uh, so long for us to begin to then say, what do we need to do differently? And I think uh, this is beyond question. That is a matter that needs addressing, and it needs addressing now. Mm -hmm. And the Constitution, if needs to be amended for it to achieve that kind of uh, change, we, we then have to amend it so that we can then achieve that end. But we cannot live in a situation where the minority in our country continue to just have abundance of land and others don't. All right, thank you very much for your time and insights. Nelson Mandela Foundation CEO Silo Hadang speaking to us about the 17th annual lecture which takes place this Saturday. It will be delivered by Chief Justice Mokwen Mokwen. Let's take a quick break. Don't go away.